almost nine o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Lori and I are going to uh, start with the pledge this morning, so if you would all stand with us. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, we're kind of excited to get this started, and we hope you are too. Um, so to get us started in our welcoming this morning, we want to introduce Mike Bozinski, uh, one of our deputy state examiners. Mike? Okay, uh, good morning everyone and welcome to your fall conference. Uh, Paul Joyce, I am told, can you hear me okay? Okay. Paul Joyce will be joining us this morning, I am told, uh, but for now I'm honored and privileged to, to bat lead off for the Board of Accounts. Um, I think we had all hoped and thought that uh, back in the spring, maybe when we had this fall conference, we would be able to meet live. Um, obviously that's not the case, but I remain hopeful and, and look forward to the next time we are able to all meet live as a group. Um, before I get started, I, I've got a little background uh, show and tell. It's it's a Dodger pennant. Um, I'm a lifelong Dodger fan since the early 70s, and last night they finally won a World Series again, the first time in 32 years. And um, I was with the Board of Accounts 32 years ago, but I, I was much, much younger. So uh, back when they won in 1988, uh, I thought it'd kind of be a regular thing, but uh, 32 years is a long wait. I know, you know, a lot of Cubs fans probably, and they had quite a long wait, more than 32 years. But anyway, uh, all is good in baseball is in my eyes. But uh, again, I, I hope you, your staff, and your family and friends have stayed healthy and safe during this pandemic. Uh, definitely trying times for all of us. And as we head into colder weather in the winter season, um, I, I would ask that you, you know, check in on uh, family and friends on a regular basis, uh, either, you know, a phone call or in person, of course, practicing social distancing, and especially check in on those people that are isolated because, uh, you know, these are have been tough times during the summer, you know, when you can get out and do different things. But the, as the cold weather approaches and we're inside a lot more, you know, definitely check in on those people because um, everyone, I think, can use a, a, a see a friendly face or hear a kind word on, on a regular basis. So I would ask everyone to keep that in mind as we go forward with this. Um, as always, thank you for your public service and that of your staff during these trying times and also your leadership. Uh, you've continued to provide quality service to your citizens in new and innovative ways. So, so thank you very much for that. As you're well aware, our agency has been able to continue auditing with a lot of it being remote. These audits have definitely not mirrored your audits in the past, and we certainly appreciate your, your cooperation and understanding and support as we continue to make use of this technology to see that these audits are completed. Our technical assistance remains in place for you. Do not hesitate to contact Ricky, Lori, Debbie with any of your questions. Our staff continues to research the funding associated with the pandemic and all the guidance 
that has been coming out on a continual basis in order for us to provide guidance to you and your offices. Make sure you, um, you know, pay attention to those and also visit our website periodically. A lot of good information there if you don't get it direct, which you should be getting it direct as well. Um, when I spoke to you in May, I mentioned that we were working with the Treasurer of State's office in order to be able to accept ACH payments from you for your audit invoices. I'm happy to announce that we have started that process as of our last billing and seven or eight counties have already paid us via ACH. So thank you to those counties. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. And that's uh, the method of payment we want you to use going forward. Instructions are included in the billings. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our central office on that. So again, thank you for your cooperation in using ACH for those invoices. Um, to close, uh, I wanna thank uh, Ricky and Lori for all their work and you know, working with you on a daily basis, as well as putting on this virtual conference. I think they've done at least four or five of those. So it's probably old hat by now, ladies. And you know, we don't, <laughs> there, there's no glitches, knock on wood. And, uh, but no, seriously, it's, it's, you know, they've been smooth conferences, I think, and, and well done. So I appreciate what they do for that. Um, thank you to the staff at the AIC. I know they're great partners for you counties as well as for us. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate to use their resources. Uh, thanks to Julie Fox, president of your association, as well as your other officers uh, for all their help and support in putting this conference together. And then uh, thank you to all of our state partners and including Wes Bennett and Tara Klutz and their staff. Uh, uh, we do a lot of collaborating with them and, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, thanks again for your public service and your leadership at your offices. It, it oftentimes goes unnoticed, but we certainly notice it and appreciate it. I hope you all stay healthy and safe, and I hope to see you at a live conference uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, our next speaker is um, our other deputy uh, state examiner, Tammy White. There she is. <laughs> she might be muted. Go. Good morning, County Auditors. It's nice to see everyone virtually once again. Um, and for those of you in Fort Wayne, uh, this is a little bit new to us. Um, I sincerely appreciate all the efforts that have been um, put forward by your association officers, uh, AIC, uh, Lori and Ricky, and, and Zach, who normally stays in the background of these meetings, but uh, we're once again trying something new. Uh, we're, we've gone through change, and so Lori and Ricky have, now we have sort of, we have some people who are uh, meeting live, and we have some of you who are still virtual, and it's very exciting to once again try out, uh, to try to push ourselves to learn something new to help us push through the pandemic. So, um, but being uh, outside of the room and not, not being all together in one place with the vendors and all of our friends uh, that we work with so frequently is just another reminder of how much change we have seen in 2020. Uh, Paul is very big on change and is always striving for improvement, but this is not, what anyone wished for, but I'm happy to see that so many of you are here participating and like us pushing through the pandemic. Um, our thoughts often go to those we know who are ill, whether it be with COVID or other um, th challenges health-wise. Um, 
And I think this compassion is a reminder to be cognizant of everyone's safety as we make our very best policies and plans to continue to push through and move forward uh, to the time when we can get past this and um, do our business in a new way. Mike mentioned the virtual audits or the remote audits, and I want to thank you for those of you who've completed your audits, and um, some of you are in your audits right now. I, I really do appreciate that you're working with our staff to try new things as well. You may be scanning documents, you may just be social distancing and trying to keep us out of your offices uh, as much as possible. And we are trying to not be on site any more than absolutely necessary. And at the same time, we want to use the technology we have. We appreciate that you also are having to deploy new technologies to accomplish your work. Um, I would, if you haven't had status meetings with your cameras on, I will tell you it really adds to the conversation so much more than a conference call. If you have that available to you, I would encourage you to try it. Uh, it's, it's a little daunting for all of us to test out new technologies, but it can be very worth it when it works and, um, and we can find ways to make it work. So I would encourage you to keep doing those things and thank you for all of the help that you have provided us. Uh, I know that you have not only a challenge of finding new ways to do your existing work, but now you have new work as well that we've not experienced. You have a lot of money coming in through the pandemic dollars, whether it be CARES Act or, or the other um, acts that gave dollars to governments that you now have to deal with and make sure you're following the rules. Many of the rules are coming out after the dollars and that leads to more challenges for your offices. So please do make sure that you follow the state directives, keep up with the, the information that is coming out of our office and those of the other state agencies that are, are working with, with these grants. Uh, Lori and Ricky are very well and capable of um, assisting you if you do have questions about the accounting for those monies or the documentation that's going to be needed as we audit those dollars going forward. Um, I do hope that during this conference you will take this opportunity to think about uh, not only those basic functions that you've been able to push through and make sure you're completing like payroll and keeping everybody going and safe and trying to do their work, um, but also just how you may want to incorporate these new ways into your regular routine once we do get back to having more face-to-face -face contact. So with that, I'm going to turn this back over to Lori and Ricky and just hope that you not only stay safe and healthy, but stay in touch because we truly can do a better job by working together. Thank you, Tammy. Well, let's see, sorry. Uh, we are going to go ahead and pass it over to Wes Bennett, the uh, DLGF commissioner. Good morning, Wes. Good morning. Ricky, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Lori, good to see you. <laughs> nice, uh, nice setup there. It is nice. Like Very it. nice. So thank you, ladies, uh, for uh, and good morning and, and welcome to everyone to uh, this year's Indiana County Auditor Association Fall Conference. I, I hope everyone can, can hear me okay. Uh, but thank you for inviting me to speak with you uh, briefly today. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, uh, what can I say? Uh, certainly a, a wonderful messages from, from Mike and Tammy and, and um, uh, as, as, a, as someone who has an 84-year-old father that um, doesn't like to stay on the reservation, uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, so, you know, what a year. And it's hard to imagine. It's been a year since we met in French Lick. And I'm sure no one could have imagined last year that we would be meeting in this manner. 
However, in the face of our current circumstances, I certainly applaud your decision to make the best of the situation and continue to meet both virtually and in person. And I, I just, I've got to say in just a couple minutes that I'm going to speak with you today that your, your ICAA leadership has just been outstanding to work with this year, but especially during these last nine months. And, and Auditor Fox, I congratulate you on your tenure as president of ICAA. Uh, you've done a remarkable job in a very difficult situation. And Julie, I just want to thank you for your efforts, for your leadership, and for continuing to build upon our strong relationship. And of course, you've got uh, President Elector Bannock uh, coming in, and I know you will continue uh, to that strong leadership of your predecessors. And I, along with everyone at DLGF, look forward to working with you and your leadership team. Also, I uh, want to make sure that uh, I uh, would be remiss if I didn't recognize Auditor Tara Klutz and her staff, along with Paul and his staff. Uh, again, we continue to work very closely together on your behalf. and. And so the, the triad uh, DLGF, State Board of Accounts and Auditor State uh, will always continue to work closely on your behalf. So, so before I turn this over, uh, back over to uh, Lori and Ricky to, to hear from uh, the distinguished county council member from Owen County and your AIC president, Anton Neff, I'd like to bring up a couple thoughts that you might have heard me mention uh, at the AIC conference, but for those of you that didn't, I, I just wanna give you a couple thoughts here uh, for your consideration. Uh, first of all, how we normally operate, how we provide services to our citizens and stakeholders has obviously had to change. And the DLGF budget workshops have gone virtual and will likely remain that way, even post-COVID. How your public safety personnel, how your courts interact with citizens has changed, just to name a few. Uh, we've all had to become uh, accustomed to WebEx or Teams or Zoom meetings, which have become the norm. And for some of you and other local units of government especially, that's been challenging. Uh, lack of broadband or slow internet connections have hampered your ability to operate and work remotely. But I can assure you that Governor Holcomb, Lieutenant Governor Crouch, our state legislators, that all of us, you and me, are all pushing hard to bring broadband to every corner of the state of Indiana. We're going to get it done. That's going to help a lot. But my point in bringing it up is this, how you and every local unit of government, whether you're a library, a township, a city or town, conservancy district, regardless of those uh, in your county and across the state of Indiana, we must embrace and implement current and new technology. And that will determine how successful and efficient we will be in serving our constituents. Now and well into the future or post COVID, most of us, uh, each of us must use technology to its fullest. We need to be ready for additional change and be equipped to use the technology that is both currently available as well as new technology that's coming online. Our citizens expect us to make the best use and highest level of available technology. Number two, uh, uh, obviously revenue is going to be an issue for us for several years. We all need to continue to look for the economies of scale and additional areas of partnership in order to leverage our resources. I've mentioned that the state road salt program is just one good example of a successful partnership between the state and local government. However, it doesn't have to be a collaboration with just the state of Indiana to be a game changer. Look to your neighbors to find areas of cost savings and efficiency. We all need to review and possibly reset our pri uh, spending priorities. And please continue to think and project long-term, whether it be three, five, seven years, even maybe a decade down the road, think long-term. Finally, I wanna give a big shout out to all the county auditors and your staff. Uh, it, you did a remarkable job handling the virtual budget workshops in a very professional and effective manner. And I, again, I congratulate you and, and, and applaud uh, everyone's hard work and, and thank you for your patience and especially understanding as we dealt with some very, very difficult gateway issues at a very, very bad time. So thank you for your, for your professionalism. Thank you for your patience as we, uh, as we dealt with that. No, by the way, uh, we have almost 1,782 notices ready to go out by mid-November. So we are way ahead of last year. And again, that also speaks to your efficiency and your effectiveness in, in your budgeting process. As I close today, I, I, I wanna say that I have both witnessed and heard firsthand the efforts of you 
and your colleagues across the state as you continue to provide the critical services necessary for our citizens to maintain as normal a daily routine as possible. The communication and collaboration is at an unprecedented level. Your efforts are making a big difference in your county and across the state of Indiana. And I thank you for your hard work, your dedication, and perseverance on behalf of the citizens of the great state of Indiana. I wish you all good health, enjoy your conference, and I look forward to seeing everyone in person next year. Lori, Ricky, back to you. Thank you, Wes. Thank you. Um, so the next uh, one we want to step up is our state examiner, Paul Joyce has joined us. Paul? I had to make sure I'm unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that, not that any of us have made that mistake yet, right? No. Um, but anyhow, um, I do appreciate all the auditors being here today. Um, I know it's probably not how you would prefer to have your 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 meeting. Um, I, I know that Ricky and Lori actually prefer a lot of live meetings, and and to be honest, I do too. Um, I, I can say I originally thought that virtual meetings. Um, they, they would be a good thing um, and, and they can be a good thing, but in the sense of a, a large gathering like this, when you have large people, you know, people from all over the state, uh, you, you actually lose that um, camaraderie that you get and, and the social aspect of, of what being together actually means. So, you know, to that part, it's a, it's a shame we have to meet this way. Uh, but the good thing is the information that you need will will get out there. Um, I, I see a lot of positives coming from um, how communications is done. Wes touched on it a little bit as far as uh, adapting to today's current technologies. Um, you know, we we started the process, you know, a few years ago of of really creating uploads and being able to get data from a remote um, in, a, in a remote sense and and trying to be able to um, to do your audits not 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 from a hundred percent remote perspective but from a, a a perspective of having the data and being able to look through it and go through it um, not always just sitting there in your office um, which I know y'all love us being there every single day of the week. Um, but um, as you know, when some relatives um, overstay their welcome, you're, you you love them, but you can't you can't wait for the door to hit them in the behind. Uh, so uh, you know that's kind of how I think most people see auditors is like, yeah, you're welcome. Um, when you leaving? So uh, you know we get that, and and a lot of that process was to try to um, you know work around that aspect of you know, the intrusive part of, of being an auditor, and it, and it is intrusive. Um, but uh, that being said, COVID, I think is, if there's a positive that's gonna come from it, from government, um, it's, it's taught us that we really don't know how to communicate um, without setting in a live setting real well. And, and I think that, so hopefully we're all learning from that and, and we'll gain the positives from it, and, and we'll also learn from the negatives and make this a, hopefully a better process when it's all over with. Um, I don't think you'll see on a, any type of regular or irregular basis, um, your annual meetings being held virtually uh, after COVID is over. Uh, those I think are, are total you know, flops, uh, but as I mentioned, it will get you the important information that you need uh, as we deal with this difficult time. And of course, when we started this back in March, you know, everybody was trying to plan their conferences and they're trying to, you know, plan, can we get together? Can we get into a central location? Will there even be hotels open, uh, you know, for us to go to? Um, it, are we establishing a plan where we're, we're setting ourselves up to, um, you know, bring this back to our community or back to our families? And, you know, it was something that we definitely, um, you know, pondered. And unfortunately, we don't know what was going to happen six, seven months ago when March, you know, was here. 
And now we're here in October and in March, April, May, you know, they kept talking about this second wave of stuff coming around. And well, I would say it's coming back around. So um, I th think when everybody was right and looking forward and saying, you know, this is definitely not something that's going to come and just go right away. So um, I'm, I'm glad we did adapt to this. I'm glad that um, that your board and everybody decided to do this in, a, in, in the virtual format um, to give you that opportunity to stay home if, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, but the most important thing is to stay connected. And, and, and Ricky and Lori, um, you know, they're here for you um, today as they were in March and every day between now and then and every day going forward. Um, and they'll get your emails, they'll get your phone calls. Um, we as an agency try to stay um, as operating as much as close to normal as possible. Um, and, we, you know, we, we adapted early to um, Teams, um, WebEx. Um, so we were already having uh, a lot of internal virtual meetings um, in our office. So uh, we were encouraging our field staff to um, still get on board with the process and communicate um, with, you know, live via um, video and audio with um, the people when they go out there to do audio to do audits. Um, so uh, if they're not, encourage them turn on their cameras. Uh, they're supposed to be. Um, I will tell you that, you know, when we first started out through remote audits, um, you know, they try to do it through emails. Uh, it don't work. Um, you know, you need that one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in person or whether it's um, like we're doing right now, where, well, actually not even right now, because this is kind of like one way going out. But if we were doing a, an actual, if it was just me and Ricky and Lori, we'd actually have an interactive conference going on right now. And that's really important, that interactive part of it. So I'd encourage you to do that. And if, if your community is not doing that within your office, I would encourage you to do that even within your office. Um, I encourage, uh, you know, to keep looking forward as we roll through this pandemic area. And that if, um, you know, things get so bad where they start closing back down again, um, let's make sure that we're looking at what our office needs to do and, and what we need to do to service um, our constituents and the community that we serve. Uh, and, and that's really important. And, and as the office holder, that's, that's kind of part your part of looking, looking to that forward part of, let's look one month, two months, three months down the road of how that could affect um, our government operations, because there's so much that needs to get done as far as, you know, uh, property tax bills going out, property tax bills getting collected. And so the money of not only your government can run, but the money of uh, other governments can run as well. So uh, it's a machine that, um, that, you know, in government that has to work together um, for, for us all to succeed. So uh, please do as you go forward, when you run into problems and questions, utilize Ricky, utilize um, Lori, Debbie, myself, and don't ever hesitate to call and ask any question. Um, I, I will bring up, because this came up um, twice in the last um, two days, it came up money, it came up Tuesday, uh, it came up money in a county, it came up Tuesday in a city, um, on the spending of, of, of IFA money. Um, and, you know, the auditor's responsibilities or the clerk treasurer's responsibilities, council's responsibilities, um, in your case, the commissioner's responsibilities or the mayor's responsibilities in a city's case, but it's important to remember that the funding and the spending laws in the state of Indiana have not changed. Everybody still has their own specific role to play. And, and that even goes with money that's drawn down from IFA. That's why you were spending it out of an appropriated account. It, it still is money that everybody has their part in play in. It's, it's money that's been appropriated by the council. It's money that's been spent and approved by the commissioners and, and as the auditor you're reconciling and auditing that claim prior to the payment to see that all those aspects have been followed so it's important to make sure that that's all going on there's there's been confusion as to who has spending authority over this money the, the spending authority in the state of indiana still follows the same guidelines that it has before the only real difference is is the in, in the IFA is they talked about it being unbudgeted. And that's just like saying apples and oranges. You're spending apples and oranges out of this one fund here. 
And when IFA is giving you this money, you're moving the oranges back out of that fund and you still only have apples in it. And, and I mean, that's a simple analogy of it, but uh, it, it really is what you have going on. Um, so nothing has changed. And, and, and that's, that, that's the important thing for people to understand. If you don't, what you're gonna wind up having is that you're gonna have a county or a city that winds up spending a lot of unappropriated monies. And that's what we don't want to happen. So but let's not fall in that trap. And and if you feel something's amiss, make sure you call Ricky, make sure you call Lori. Uh, we are here to help you. Um, so uh, with that, um, please do have a wonderful meeting. Um, I'm sorry I'm late. I was over talking to the um, city, the Municipal League of Clerk Treasurers. Um, they, they and you have uh, this with the virtual world a meeting at the same time. So uh i do appreciate y'all's attendance to this um your dedication to the people that that you're serving uh you know especially you know your community you serve a large part in it um, please keep up the great work thank you very much thank you paul okay so now we're going to try something new this has not been done before um so what we're going to do is we're going to um, introduce uh vicky urbanic to to the uh, screen and we're going to see how this in live viewing works vicky thank you ricky i hope it's working We'll see. It's working. Okay, Wait, great. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Indiana County Auditors Association Fall 2020 Conference. Whether you are here in person in Fort Wayne or attending virtually, we are thrilled that you could join us. Um, well, as we all know, 2020 has been a long, strange, and difficult and challenging year for all of us. And so it goes with our conference. Planning for these conferences actually begins about two years in advance. And this hybrid approach of a conference is not what we had planned. But as with so many other things this year, we've had to make some sacrifices and we've had to make some compromises and we've had to make some adjustments in order to meet our objective. And that objective is to provide us county auditors with educational resources and materials so that we can improve on our service to the taxpayers, but at the same time that we do so in a responsible manner in order to help keep everyone safe and healthy. So along those lines, it's time for me on behalf of the association to issue a few words of thank you to some people who have been working really hard to make this conference work. Um, first off, thanks goes to the staff here at the Grand Wayne um, Center in Fort Wayne. They have just been fantastic in helping us with our social distancing and with the setup and with the technology. Thanks also goes to our incredible AV specialist, Zach, who's in the back of the room working his magic with computers and yes, let's hear it for Zach, computers and uh, technology. Um, thanks also goes to the Association of Indiana Counties and in particular, Jackie Clements. She has just been giving us a tremendous amount of support and, and guidance. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and thanks also goes to the State Board of Accounts, and in particular, Debbie, Lori, and Ricky. They have been meeting with us association board members on and off for um, more than a month trying to work out the logistics of this conference. And a very special thanks um, goes to um, all of the board members of the association, but in particular, our president, Julie Fox. She has done a tremendous job as president trying to work through and building consensus. There were some differences of opinion on the board as to how we should proceed, but um, a true leader tries to build consensus and that's what Julie did. Um, I do have a few housekeeping announcements to make. Uh, first off, 
for the auditors who are here in person, um, our Thursday night activity is Auditors Got Talent, Talent Show. And I have some great news for all of you. For those of you who have not yet signed up to be a participant in the Talent Show, there's still time. So all you have to do is go to the, yeah, I'm talking to you guys, um, go to our registration table and sign up to be a participant in the Talent Show. It's going to be a great, fun event. Also, during the conference, uh, if you have any questions that you would like to ask, just raise your hand and one of us will come and give you a card that you could write your question on and we will submit it on your behalf to uh, Lori and Ricky. Um, also, we ask you to sit in your designated districts and to take your materials with you that will assist staff in cleaning after the day's events. And then on Friday, our event is going to be a Zoom meeting. So for those of you who are participating virtually, that means that you will have to access the meeting with a different link than what you're using today and tomorrow. So please watch your emails. We will be providing you that Zoom information via email. We want to test it out first just to make sure it works. And now in closing, I have another announcement to make, and unfortunately, it's a sad announcement. Um, our president, Julie Fox, was with us earlier this week, but she had to leave um, because she, uh, her mother passed away. And she is planning to come back and join us at some point. So please, everyone, she has put so much work into this conference. Um, Please keep Julie in your thoughts and prayers during this very, very difficult time. And with that, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, and this is uh, Anton Neff. He is Owen County Council Member, who is also president this year of the AIC Board. And with that, I'll turn it over. Uh, have a great conference, everyone, and please stay safe. Take it away, Anton. Thank you very much, Vicki, and, and thank you all for being here. On behalf of the Association of Indiana Counties, we very much appreciate your service, the time and effort that you and your staff um, put into making county government successful and working efficiently and for the benefit of our taxpayers and residents. Um, I kind of began my career in public service 20 years ago when I myself was a candidate for auditor. I was 22 at the time, had no idea what I was getting into, and um, I, did, uh, not, I didn't happen to get elected to that. It was a very close election, and looking back at it, I'm thinking, boy, I dodged the bullet, didn't I? Um, if there's one thing that you realize uh, when you're in county government, whether it's uh, as a council member, a surveyor, coroner, those kind of things, it's how important and how critical the function of the auditor and the auditor's office is. It is the central hub of county government. It is so critical for our success in county government. And for that, uh, I'm very grateful. And I think we all uh, can agree uh, that it is so critical to perform the functions and duties of the office um, at maximum efficiency. And uh, it is very much appreciated. Um, I also wanna recognize um, our AIC staff that have been uh, around and helpful here. Uh, Elizabeth Mallers, Jackie Clements, of course, our director, David Bodorf, Brian Hoff is with us today. Uh, and of course, Christine, uh, Brett, and Pam, who are uh, back at the office as well. So uh, we're here to support you and be a partner in that. Um, in light of the situation involving uh, Julie, we, we do have a presentation we would like to make, and we're going to proceed in doing that because we do think it's important to recognize uh, her for her service. And as many of you know, um, she was um, uh, named this year's Outstanding County Auditor. Uh, for those of you that had um, viewed our uh, virtual conference and our award ceremony, we did have a, a brief uh, presentation virtually of this award to her. Uh, I had hoped to uh, hand deliver this and present it to her in person this morning, but I know Vicki will greatly accept uh, for uh, at least this morning session. She may be here this afternoon, which would be uh, incredible. Uh, but for now, um, to present to Vicki um, Julie Fox's award, and I will say a few words about Julie. Um, she became auditor in January of 2015. She's currently in her second term. 
She has served in a number of leadership uh, positions, of course, with your organization. Um, she also has completed the AIC's Institute for Excellence certificate program, uh, including the completion of 30 hours in four years, and also in one more year, 20 more hours of continuing education. Um, she also previously served as Marshall County Clerk, I believe for two terms. So Julie has put a lot into county government and her service um, in, in more ways than one. And I wish she was here this morning, as I'm sure all of you would agree, but that certainly does not take away from her outstanding service and uh, deserving uh, of this award. So with that, please join me in congratulating Julie as most outstanding auditor for 2020. One more introduction here before I leave the stage. Clay County Auditor Jennifer Flater will lead us with the blessing for the start of your conference. Good morning. We're doing things a little different this year. So if you would bow your heads and pray, please. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are um, able to be here virtually or in person. I just thank you for everything that you've done for us everything that you will do for us. And I just ask, Lord, for those of us who are here in person, that you put a hedge of protection around us, keep us safe and healthy and well, that you give us safe travels home. I ask, Lord, that you be with this conference, with the speakers and the presenters, that um, we are able to take home all the knowledge and um, that we need to go back to better um, serve our counties. And Lord, I ask that you be with the elected officials from the local levels all the way up to the president. It just seems right now, Lord, in our um, society and everything that we are just in turmoil constantly. So I just ask that you just be with all of us and help us to have a loving, forgiving heart, a kind heart. I ask that you be with our military who um, serve and protect us every day and give us the freedoms that we so long to have. And I pray, Lord, that you be with the election next week. And that, again, that you'll give everyone safe travels home from our conference here in Fort Wayne. And we ask this in your name. Amen.